I made a survivor's clone by learning Godot script for the first time. I started by watching tutorials about the engine and 25 work hours later, I published my first game on HIO. But how did I get here? Well, usually I'm a C++ developer and I'm currently developing my first game written entirely in C++. But truth be told, that can get boring sometimes. And so in order to motivate myself, I spent about three hours trying Godot for the first time and making my first simple game in it. Back then I decided to use C Sharp, which is not natively supported by the editor. I didn't know that though and so I thought that this was a good choice. But apparently if you use GD script you will have a much easier time in the engine. And so this is where it all began this time. Last time you guys told me to watch a tutorial and so this time I did. There were definitely some really good tips in there. Unfortunately though all of those tips were way too overwhelming for me and I couldn't follow it all. This sucks. It's too fast. It's great but it's too fast. What if we watch this on twice the speed? Because, you know, I'm a zoomer. After that, I watched a little bit more, but I was eager to get started. There was only one question left to answer. Which game should I be doing? In the end, I decided to make Vampire Survivors. Because I've already made the game previously in C++. And I've also made a video about it, which you should totally check out. Hmm? I'll link it right here. So guys, which game are we making? Do you have any cool ideas? Gothic 1, I'm not making a 3D game. Card game, Counter Strike, Tetris, Tower Defense. Vampire Survivor's Clone. I'm keen to making a Vampire Survivor's Clone actually, but in my own universe using my own sprites. In order to begin, we have to download the original Godot because people told me that Godot strip script is the way to go. Now my question is, is it exactly the same as before where it's just two files? Oh, it is. I've said it last time and I'm gonna say it again i really like that godot is only two executables that you have to extract in order to get started all right now we have two more executables and now we are running godot on godot script this project uses features unsupported by the current build c sharp that's fine we're going to make a new project <laughs> not this again <laughs> the godot setup for new projects is really annoying and should be improved because in my opinion it is one of the hurdles that you have to go through first and i don't think it should be there nonetheless after after I set up my project, I was eager to get going. Using the knowledge from my previous attempts, it was very easy for me to set up my first character. After that, I wanted to try out how Godot handles rotations. And so I thought it would be a cool idea if I replicated the sword swing that I have in my own game. Because I want to have an active vampire survivors where you run around with WASD. Like the sword will be where your mouse is and then you use abilities. So how do I do this? First, I grabbed myself a sword from my sprites. Then I imported that into the engine. I added the sword to the character and then afterwards I tried out how I could rotate the sword to make it look really cool on the character. Now uh, when we press F5 we should see our character with a sword right? Yeah cool. Next I added a script so I could control the sword swing and rotation. Since this was totally new for me I spent a little time to get to know the editor and I have to say the built-in one is really good. It has extensive information about every single function in the engine and it is all built into the editor which is a huge plus. After that I set up a very simple input map so I can move around in the world. While coding the input mapping, I started to learn the basics of GD script. Is it new vector 2? Vector 2 heading? Colon? No semicolon? <laughs> What is your problem, bro? Maybe cons? Yeah, it's gotta be cons, right? It says expected an end of statement after an expression. Var heading is no vector 2? No types? But after that was done, I started drawing my first very simple tile set so we could move the character in a world that doesn't look like an empty space. In case you don't remember how that works, you need to create a tile map over here as a node. And then at the bottom in the tiles, when selecting the tile map, you have to drag and drop the PNG file for the atlas into the empty field. And then you change the texture region, I think, to the size of your sprites, which is in this case 32 by 32. And then you need to tell the texture atlas how big each tile is as well. And that will let you paste your tile in a nice little grid damn we can already move in our thing and we can schlitz this guy schlitz boom next i wanted to make it so that the sword will follow the mouse but i had absolutely no idea how i'm gonna start coding it and so i was clueless and tried to bunch of different things <laughs> I think I'm rotating it every frame by that much. It technically works. Oh, I see. Centered on. So we want to center around the character. And then we uh, offset this like that. Oh, wow. That's so much easier. Okay. 
Oh my god, yes. Then I made the weapon flip based on where the mouse is. And I made the character look in the same direction. Oh, 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 oh. Schlitz, 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 boom, 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 boom. Schlitz. Guys, it works. Let's add in a skeleton. Next, I wanted to have an enemy, so I grabbed myself one of my skeletons. And then I simply imported the sprite into the engine and created an animation so that the skeleton could idle around. Perfect. <laughs> The first thing I wanted to do the next day was to create an animation for the sword so that we could animate the swing. Now I'm pretty sure that I could have done this exclusively through nodes using, you know, the go.node system. But my tendencies as a C++ programmer told me to go the coding route. And that's what I did. This is also where I learned about enums and how to use them. And then I just continued programming until I was able to do it. I'm gonna spare you the details, but I coded a lot. At this point I wanna talk about a very cool system in Godot, which is hot code reload. You can essentially run the game in Windows mode and then make the window always on top, allowing you to change the code of the game while it is running and then see the result in real time without having to close the application. In my opinion, this is one of the greatest things about the engine. The funny thing is, I didn't notice any lags at all. I could change a bunch of code and it would just work. Interesting. Wow, this is starting to look really good. Next, I started coding in the actual animation part of the sword, which in case you're wondering, was a bunch more code. Look, it sets the rotation to the mouse. Oh, I see. So that's why it gets reset. <laughs> it changes every time. <laughs> Now, while coding this animation, I wanted to apply an easing function to the swing. But this is where it got weird. You seem to be defining tweens as like objects. And then you can give these objects a type of easing function, which... Uh, okay, don't get... Now, I didn't watch a tutorial. Disappointed! But uh, coming from C++, this is awfully weird. Because what I'm used there is just a function that you supply a t-value to and then it returns you a different t-value between 0 and 1. And that's how you do your easing. So I tried a little bit, but in the end I decided to use the easing functions that I knew from the internet, which looked something like this. You have a curve that behaves differently based on the math that is behind it. Ease in, ease out, all of those have different curves. And then I took those functions from the internet and implemented them in Godot. For example, ease out expo looks something like this. And you can then generate a t-value by using it like this. Very simple. So I added in animations for death, attack and running. I gave the skeleton the collider and then I created a what you call in unity prefab or in Godot a scene so that I could create instances. And this is where we got to my favorite part of course, I could finally add in a script. First, I wanted the skeleton to follow the player. In order to do that, I needed to get an instance or a handle on the player and then just move towards it. Okay, I don't know if we need that, but let's see what happens. Run the... I keep coming back to this. Like, this is why I don't like engines too much. Like, I just want you to fucking move to the player, bro. But this is also the great thing about Godot. You can watch a bunch of tutorials that explain almost anything. And another great thing is that you can find code online that you can just yoink. What? Then you can just paste it into your script. What the fuck? and fix the errors and you should be good to go. So he's slowly moving to- wow, that's slow. I probably don't use speed, right? I can't move. I can't get out of him because he's pushing me to the right. Go away. Stop pushing me. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> he's like- <laughs> Oh, now I'm pushing him. Schlitz! Schlitz! Get the fuck out of my way, bitch! There we go. Now we can spam this and- Schlitz! 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 Okay, maybe I was having a little bit too much fun with the engine. But the moment he's on my head... <laughs> it just doesn't stop. What is that bullshit? <laughs> the character bodies are set to platformer mode instead of top down. Aha! This is actually a setting that you could set on a character body to D. You can either set it to floating or grounded. When it's floating, it doesn't attach itself to the head. Not sure exactly what that means in the engine, but uh, once I set it to floating, it worked. Ah, uh, yeah! Oh, okay, so we no longer have a skeleton head. <laughs> now that I had enemies following the player, it was time to make a spawning system. This is also the time where I learned about prefabs, or how Godot likes to call them, 
scenes for the first time. Remember when I turned my skeleton into a scene? You can then load the scene by supplying a path to the file. And then once you have loaded the scene, you can instantiate it and add it as a child to the tree. And then enemies will spawn, but they don't do anything. So I needed to make sure that inside the scene, the skeleton actually had access to the correct script and it was attached. And then in the script, I needed to make sure that I get access to the player. It works. Okay, so now we have Schlitz. Schlitz. I then got curious and wanted to test how many enemies I could actually spawn before the game started slowing down. So I left the game running and this is the result after a couple of hours. I don't know how many enemies that is, but it looks good. So first I want to change the player script and I want to add in our first actual attack the wind slash hopefully it is transparent when i add this in that would be so cool now how do i make this spawn from my sword so i started cooking by first creating an area to d i added a collision shape to d then i added a sprite to d and finally i changed the collider oh my god this engine is so fucking good look at this guys i then turned it into a scene and loaded it in the script of the player i really started to get the hang of godot now mm. how do we instantiate the wind slash now since i already had access to the scene i just needed to call instantiate and then create a variable out of that and that variable could then be added as a child of a player but first i wanted to test out what happens when i instantiate a bunch of wind slashes and never free them turns out if you do that you're actually leaking memory wow it does leak memory you see how it goes up but okay it's fine i mean we're doing dumb stuff right uh, but it's interesting to know back to the wind slash i was now able to instantiate it and i was using this code to spawn the instances effectively adding them to the tree's root as a child i then wrote a simple script on the wind slash to follow a direction based on speed I calculated the direction by taking the mouse position minus the position of the player. And then I supplied that to the wind slash. 200 speed is too much. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, how about we do 10 for now? Oh wow, wow. Look at this, guys. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, this is so cool. Look at this. The, the closer I am. The reason why this happens is because I didn't normalize the direction in which the wind slash would fly. And a simple direction dot normalize fixed the problem. <laughs> It's gonna fly, boys! Schlitz, Schlitz, Schlitz! <laughs> yeah, the speed is not very fast. So now that that was fixed, I wanted to learn how to check for collision. And this was the first time that I actually learned about signals. For example, an Area 2D node on the right side has a tab called Node. And then down here, there's a list of signals. And you can see here that there is the onbody entered event or signal that is connected to a function called onbody entered, which inside the script looks something like this. If we enter a body and the body is an enemy, then the body takes the damage of the attack of the wind slash. Oh wow! It works, guys. It's too slow. It's gotta be like 70 or something. I then spent the next two hours trying to improve the wind slash and make it look really cool. No way! Damn, son, bro! Guys, I have another idea. <laughs> oh, it's the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> okay then i want to now make it so that this ability is being used automatically and i would like to make an hp bar progress bar ui node is the way okay it's one way progress bar wow that's a big one after fiddling around with the progress bar and getting used to it i noticed that i needed a red dot and a black dot which i then added to the sprites on the right so progress is supposed to be red and then this is supposed to be nothing and if i change the value ah i get it now and it just worked cool it works he literally one shots the player the moment he gets there i need to have some sort of attack cooldown so i coded in that the skeleton would change into the attack animation when it collides with the player otherwise it will just run it works cool what if they go here boom Boom! I also made the skeleton play the death animation when they actually died. I made the skeletons hit only once during their entire attack animation and tweaked a few values so that the attack animation was fast and snappy, which totally didn't take a couple of hours because I was dealing with engine problems. But let's not talk about this, okay? Oh, that's awesome. This is cool. <laughs> 
The next day I wanted to add an ability bar on the bottom as a UI element so I could see my abilities that I've already trained. And this is where I found a very unusual approach where I would just add the sprite as an element to the camera. I wouldn't use the canvas. I created a sprite to be as a child not on the camera and then I added the bar as a sprite and this is where the discussion started. Wow look at this guys. We have our skill bar in the game already. No, you do it on the canvas, otherwise your sprite lives in the world, XD. So, as chat recommended, I started using the canvas layer and I put in the sprite of the bar in there so I could see it in the game, but I didn't. What is happening now? Of course it's invisible. Of course it is invisible because I now use a canvas layer. Nah, this is dumb. Canvas layer set by using the blue rect in the scene. Which blue rect are we talking about? Oh! So essentially the problem with the canvas layer that I had was that it wasn't aligned with the screen that I see in the game or the camera. And on top of that, the size of the sprite was way lower than I actually would see in the editor. Which made it difficult to position the elements properly in the game. I really tried learning the canvas layer from scratch without watching a tutorial. I know that wasn't the best decision, but I really wanted to give it a try. And unfortunately, it didn't work out. So I went back to the way I had it previously, which was just a sprite as a child below the camera i have a small one here <laughs> i guess it's fine but i don't i just don't like it i don't like it it gets worse the more i use it it gets worse well there's surely a clean way to do this yeah i'm, I'm done man i'm done L listen i'm j we're just gonna do it like this okay well we have enemies spawning now and i want to display the weapon on the canvas item with the ui question finally out of the way i could start working on the ui so first i added in a couple of slots for weapons then i added in a bunch more sprites and finally i also added in slots for accessories that you could unlock later if I managed to get to it. All in all, the UI became much more filled and I was very happy about my progress. A user then told me how to do mirroring in the tile map so that the world repeats indefinitely and that made the game look much more polished and that in turn made me very happy because I was starting to see a lot of progress. <laughs> Day 5 sucked, because I tried to find a way to create a construct or some sort of data which lets me add weapons of different types to my character. And so I was coding and coding and coding a lot, and I tried many different things, but in the end I got nothing done. Day 6 almost turned out to be the same as day 5. I was coding a lot and tried out a bunch of things just to get my first weapon to work on my character. That is until someone showed me a different way of doing things. To me it looked like a JSON but it is actually called a dictionary. Okay cool, so it's a JSON with display name would be a type and then this is the value right? He also let me download and play a Skoda project which was a survivor's clone as well. And while inspecting the code I found something that helped me out a lot. He stored the scenes to the abilities as variables inside the player. I then went ahead and made a dictionary myself so I could add my first ability, the win slash, to the game. The first iteration looked something like this. I had a win slash which had one upgrade with attack 20 and a cooldown of 5 seconds and a description. So let's see what happens here. Damn bro! What is that? That looks really cool. I had to do a bunch more editing on the dictionary and I learned a lot while doing so, as well as add the scene so I know which one I needed to load when instantiating Winslash. Work, please. Shit. And that worked. <laughs> what a fucking day. The fucking UI rotates even here. It seems to work now. Once that was finally working, I also added in the additional icon sprite so I could display it on the bar at the bottom, which finally paved the way so I could add in more weapons. In case you're wondering what the final result looks like, we have a name for the ability, a scene to instantiate it, a sprite to show at the bar, and then a bunch of other data like the timer level and an array of upgrades. <laughs> 
we can now also assign multiple weapons and for example i would like to implement the lightning strike which right now loads in the wind slash scene but i want to create a new scene i started by taking one of the pre-existing sprites from my own game i then created a node containing an animated sprite 2d added the sprite animation to it and instantiate it into the game and this is what i like about godot or let's say game engines getting something visually done is always very fast and exciting i really like that and it helps a lot with burnout by this point i was really getting the hang of the godot engine in case you're wondering how i did it the lightning strike itself was an instance and then i created a lightning strike node which would just load in the scene for the instance i would then loop over all of the enemies skip those who i don't want to hit and then instantiate a lightning strike instance and add it as a child to the tree i then added this lightning strike to the dictionary and i also gave it a picture I knew this was gonna crash. Yeah, that looks good. Starting to look really nice. This is where we can finally do some interesting stuff. Yes! Damn, that looks so cool, man. It actually is fun to play now. Now I need to make the enemies a little faster because they are really slow. In addition to making the enemies faster, I also played around with their color. I wanted to make it so that when they are hit, they flash for a fraction of a second, indicating that they have been damaged. I think I like it. I like it a lot. And this is unfortunate, but true. Every time I booted up Godot, there would be an error indicating that one of the scenes was destroyed or couldn't be loaded. It would show me an error message that a scene appears to be invalid or corrupt. That's some actual bullshit. I saved it yesterday and closed it properly. Lightning strike scene. In this case, I actually rebuilt the scene and then attached the script again, hoping this would fix the problem for the future. But it actually did not fix the problem, unfortunately. So if you have encountered something similar, please let me know in the comments. Maybe you guys have any idea. Anyways, the task for today was to do damage numbers. So I began by creating a node and adding an animation player with a label. In the bottom menu, I then had to create a new animation. And this is where I could see a timeline where I could set keyframes so for example here i create a method track which will allow me to call functions and then i set the cursor to one second and decided to call the function q3 i then set the cursor back to zero and changed the scale down after which i had to click the key button which then prompted me with a menu asking me which type of curve i wanted to have and i had absolutely no idea but i knew bezier curve so um, i clicked that one i then set another keyframe at 0.3 seconds and i also set a keyframe for the color i decided to make it fully peg at 0.3 seconds and then fade out over time until reaching one second i mean it's a little bit slow in my opinion can i move these oh my god i can move these oh yeah I then changed a couple of options back and forth using the Godot editor. I have to say that was really fun to do and very intuitive. And that is the final result over here. After that, I exported the damage number as a scene and added that to the enemies. We have damage numbers now. Godot is awesome, I tell you. I then decided to create a menu, but I wanted to learn how to do it in a nine sliced way. Essentially cutting a sprite into nine slices so that you can stretch it indefinitely. The node I had to use for that was called the nine patch rect. You then have to click this edit region button which prompts you to a menu and in this menu you can drag the lines to where you want the nine slice regions to be wow it just works yes indeed it just worked and looked really good i then decided to create an upgrade menu similar to the one that you have in vampire survivors for that i created one big menu and put in three smaller ones after that i needed to learn how to add text to those and in my opinion it wasn't very intuitive to work with it was difficult to find out how to break the text in a new line and on top of that i felt like there was a lot more space than needed to be it's so bad why is there so much space at the top what is this space what's going on there like it's trying to fit some in something in there but there's nothing that's so stupid it looks so pixelated compared to the rest do you guys see that watch this this is so weird i then added a description to each of the weapons that i already had and had to map the descriptions to the buttons in the menu i did this in a very unorthodox way but in the end it worked for me and that's the most important thing in my opinion the rest works it works i trained lightning strike pork champ yeah that's actually really cool i also added in space for icons for the different types of weapons so that whenever you level up you also see the icon in the menu now that is fucking cool
The next day I wanted to add experience. For that I added in a gray, blue and golden orange and then created a dictionary that I learned about earlier to describe how much experience they give and which PNG they reference. The collision shape is a circle for which I connected the on body entered method. I then check if the body that entered this is the player and if it is then I add the experience value to the player. Oranges spawn whenever enemies die. Let's see if that works. That would be way too easy. Shit complaining. A quick one line fix and it actually worked. Enemies would now drop experience oranges upon death. I then spent the rest of the day polishing the UI. For example the upgrade menu should not display nothing but instead it should display gold if there's no more upgrades to be gained. I also added in an XP bar the same way I did with the HP. In addition to that I added information about the level of the player and how much gold we have. <laughs> From this day onward, I kept getting the infamous invalid scene error. And it was really frustrating because oftentimes I had to redo what I did the day before. Aside from that, I had a good time and I started working on my spawning system. For that, I created a dictionary that would hold a scene to the enemy, a timer, a frequency, a start and an end timer. I would then loop over this list and check whether I should spawn an enemy or not. And I also added in a new enemy, which is a shambler from my tower defense game. Wow, it's spawning one a second. Goodness, that's actually quite a few oh guys the shamblers are coming they're huge oh he's looping his death animation okay we need to survive and we also need to display the game time okay um uh, is there a former time string game time it's got to be because godot is a library right guys and libraries they give you things to work with right like for example godot format to time if it works it works right okay let's see please work Awesome! Now we have game time, we have level, we have gold. Do we even need the level? Yeah, yeah, that, that is better. It's the same problem again. You need to learn how to properly close applications. Yeah, how about not pressing this button right here that says close application and there it is. Yeah. After fixing the error again, I started working on the last ability which would be a bone toss. Essentially, I wanted it to spin outwards like a spiral. Now, since I didn't know any math, I just asked chat if they could help me out. And uh, being a streamer is very helpful because they could help me. They provided me with this function that made the bone spin around in a circle over time. Feels just like yoinking from the internet, it's great. Now, I'm expecting what happens is when I start the game, this thing is just gonna fly on a spiral. It's really fast. I think that's a little too fast. I don't know what I'm doing. But okay, let's just see what happens here. <laughs> this is good. Ooh, look at this, guys. It does no damage. Obviously, because it doesn't have any attack. Spawn. Bones. That spiral outward dealing damage along their path. Is it gonna happen? Fuck. Come on. Activate. Mm. Oh, there we go. It actually works. Clunk, 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 clunk. It keeps on spamming bones. Wow, look at that. Damn. AFK Crimson Land. Yeah, it's, it's OP because the boner never disappears. And it never disappears. I forgot the, the free stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna get an error, am I? <laughs> I told you. Every time. Never gotten that error when using C sharp. True. True. I was using C sharp. I never, never gotten that error there. Uh, so yeah, after being pissed at Godot for a couple of minutes, again, I literally did almost nothing the entire day when it comes to progress. The only thing I did was rework my win slash to be better. Because I learned how to use the dictionary properly, this time I would be able to use the win slash better and then incorporate upgrades in a much better way. So let's see if it works. Please work. Of course it doesn't work. Fires to project. Please work. Oh my god, it works! That's how exactly how I wanted it to be. So yeah, at the end of the day, I literally had the same game. Is it gonna give us another scene error? 100%. Oh my god, of course. Bone spiral scene, guys. Well, you never learn, so yes. What are you talking about? I never learn, Mr. Azen. What am I supposed to learn? Explain that to me, hmm? How to properly close a program by not clicking the X button and just leaving it on running all the, all the time? If anyone has 
any idea what this error means, where it comes from, please tell me what it is. By this time I was getting very comfortable with Godot so I decided to make a new UI menu, the main menu of the game. I also added in a play button that we could click to start the round. I also know the way I did UI is very unorthodox, you shouldn't be using all of those nodes and you should actually use the canvas layer, but in the end it worked out for me exceptionally well and I was very surprised. Huh. That makes no sense. The UI is a ch child of the player and for some reason the UI moves. It's not a bug, it's a feature. Yeah, I didn't use a canvas layer. Yeah, that's the reason. But why? It should move. <laughs> oh, I know why. You can't see it, but it's the process mode always. I also added in a big enemy that is supposed to be the final boss of the level. This one is supposed to be the final enemy that you have to beat in order to win the game. Wow, guys, today I didn't get a single error. It just worked. We need some soundtrack. This was the actual last day of me working on the project. And it was also the worst day for me because I had to learn how to add in sounds. And I'm totally inexperienced when it comes to that field. I mean, I did try to record some sound effects using Audacity and then applying some effects to them. I even tried out a better software called Reaper. Chat recommended this one because it's supposed to be way more powerful. But I have to say that this was a little too overwhelming for me and in the end I didn't manage to make a single good sound. So I used my streamer privilege and actually asked chat if they could help me out. And this is where I have to give credit to Anxiety for supplying a swing sound and to AQ for supplying a bunch of other sounds as well. And lastly to Evo for supplying the background music for the game. I myself went back to doing art for the game because that is what I know the best and I decided to change the game into a snowy area which in turn had me change the wind slash from white to black because then it gave me more contrast. In addition to that I added in shadows to all of the enemies and I made the eyes a bit darker. I also tried out another software called Chiptune which helps you create sounds if you're a total beginner. Let's try that, save. That is it. I like that. Guys I wanna make another game of a Godot game in the future. It looks really good. Oh my God! Yeah, and lastly, I used the export tool of Godot to build to Windows. It wasn't actually that difficult. You export and it's done and it's actually very fast. I then set up a page on HIO and released the game for the public. If you're interested in it, there will be a link in the description. And yeah, that's about it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and I'll see you all next time. Peace!